this is a very unexpected, unhinged rant, but I feel like I need to bring this to your guys' attention. So recently, I made it pretty clear that Resident Evil 6 is going to be the next game that I review for this channel. Not only am I going to be covering every single campaign in somewhat full detail, but I'm also going to be going over why I believe the game failed and what it does right. Now, if you know Resident Evil 6, obviously it's no stranger to this channel. I've played it in the past with Brian, and I've actually covered it a couple of times in my other Resident Evil editorials, but I've never done a full deep dive on the game. Now, if you're watching this right now, you're probably thinking, well, what the fuck are you doing here, Tristan? We're, we're waiting for the review. It's coming. Don't worry. I have a hard drive full of footage from that fucking game, and let me tell you, I feel like I'm brain rotten. I feel like I have just sat through all eight seasons of Dexter on repeat and then was forced to watch the new show last minute and it just like discombobulates everything inside of my head making me think that it's the same show when it's not. It's it's just a like a, a bad copycat or a bad fanfic. That's exactly how Resident Evil 6 feels. And let me explain real quick, because this isn't going to be one of those like 30 minute long unhinged rants. I'm just going to make this very short and sweet for you guys. Resident Evil 6, obviously, is not the greatest title in the series or in the franchise, I mean. I think it's pretty common knowledge for all of the fans to know that Resident Evil 6 wasn't really that good. Uh, was it awful? Eh, to some, but to people like me, I don't want to completely disregard the whole product as garbage. I wanted to dive into it and really get the meat off this bone, really suck on those bones just to get as much calcium and as much fucking enrichment as I could from the game. And who we, I have to tell you guys, it is the most boring, mundane, fucking awfully written story ever made. Resident Evil 6 is nothing more than just a carbon copy of the first campaign, but with slight tweaks here and there. And obviously when you watch my full review, you're going to understand exactly what I'm talking about. But playing this game, I shit you not, I've probably dumped at least like 80 hours into the game over the weekend alone. That's how much I've been trying to grind to get this video done. And unfortunately, sports fans, I'm beat. <laughs> like I am, I feel burnt out. My head is just fucking fried and it's mainly because playing resident evil 6 the different campaigns and all that it feels like the same thing over and over again sure you get different characters and there's lots of different arcs to explore there but none worth talking about that really went anywhere like i think it's pretty clear now for fans of the series whatever happened to jake mueller He's never talked about again. The son of Albert Wesker. Whatever happened to Sherry, she's never talked about again. At least it, it, she wasn't until the remake, Resident Evil 2 remake came out. But even then, that's like a, it's a prequel. It's going back. It's not going forward like Resident Evil 6 did. There, there, there's so many to count, right? Like there's so many to count in the game that just don't work. But for some reason, the developers thought that they were initiating this next chapter of Resident Evil, this like groundbreaking bona fide multiplayer expansion of the series that I think led to its downfall. A lot of Resident Evil 6's gameplay relies solely on the fact that you will be playing with another person, or you're supposed to be. Even if you're playing single player on your own, the offline AI will do what it's supposed to, but obviously not nearly as effective as having a buddy of yours join you. Either way, the game feels so mundane with the events that, that happen and the, the, the characters that get caught in the mix are so fucking uninteresting. Again, I'm not going to go on a long ass rant here, but I am going to give you some of the cliff notes that you can expect from my review. First of all, Leon is voiced by a totally different person now. It's no longer Paul Mercier from Resident Evil 4. It is now Matthew Mercer, who is famous for doing a lot of great voice roles, including League of Legends, I believe. He plays as one of the um, one of the champions you can choose. It really fell flat. I, I think Leon in this game sucks. He is an absolute insufferable deity of who he once was. He just makes quips the whole time. And I get that that's like, oh, that's Leon's thing. No, it's not clever like in Resident Evil 4 or like even cheesy. They don't try to reach a certain level of cheese. They just try to reach a certain level of like, hey, fill out this quota 
that we need of every character having a one-liner. Unfortunately, Leon and Jake have the most. Chris doesn't really have many one-liners, which is great. I, I actually really enjoyed Chris's campaign for that purpose. But with Leon's campaign, it is chock full of nonsense. Not only does the game not make full sense unless you beat every single campaign in order, which, you know, that's fine. I, I'm not complaining about that. I actually like that because it gives the player an opportunity to see the fight from every side, right? Like see through the eyes of everyone who was involved with this game's pandemic. And I like that. It shows you how all of them intertwine and how they all branch off and do their own things, but not really because every mission for every campaign is exactly the fucking same, but different characters. Now, a lot of people might throw their heads, their hands up in the air and say, Tristan, that's fucking bogus. That is not true. What about that mission where Jake has to hide from the Eustonek and he has to sneak around the crystal cavern with the bats that fly around with the fucking lights and shit? That doesn't happen for Leon. That doesn't happen for Chris. Perhaps not. But for all three campaigns, you get the regenerator enemy in a forced, scary moment that happens out of nowhere because I guess the devs thought, hey, we're Resident Evil. Don't forget, we have to make this scary, so throw in a segment where they're pitting up against an enemy that you can't kill. But that doesn't even make sense. That falls flat on its face because the regenerators in Resident Evil 6, they fucking suck. They're not scary. They're not strong. They're not intimidating. They don't come after you in like this really creepy, like, ah, like I'm gonna fucking eat your fucking head off, lunge across the room and take a bite out of your neck. They don't do that fucking shit. They walk up to you, wait till they're close, get into an animation where they slowly hit you that's super easy to dodge if you know what you're doing, or they grab you and force you into a QTE, much like every other fucking enemy in this game. That, and every enemy besides Leon's campaign, minus a couple of exceptions, shoots a gun. I'm not kidding. Now, obviously, to fans of the series, this is no secret, Resident Evil 6 hyped up the idea what are you freaking out about? I'm trying to do an unhinged rant. What I get confused about is where we fell off the wagon along the timeline to accept that enemies or BOWs in the Resident Evil universe can now use firearms. I'm not saying it's a terrible idea, but it it's not Resident Evil. That feels very much like a Call of Duty Zombies expansion as compared to Resident Evil. Even the zombies in Leon's campaign, there's a small segment where like these soldiers turn into zombies and they're like, oh, you know, now we're infected and they have guns that they can spray at you all willy nilly. The Juavo, the main enemy of the game, the core enemy, right? You've got the molded in Resident Evil 7, you've got the Ganados, <clears throat> excuse me, in Resident Evil 4, you know what they are. You think of them, you say the name and you're like, oh, I know exactly what that looks like. Yeah, I, I, you have the Mahinis from Resident Evil 5, you know exactly what they look like. Resident Evil 6, you say Juavo, and it's like, that could be anybody. That could be Jake's Spanish name, who knows. They're, they were such an underwhelming enemy and not that impactful to the game's story that I've already forgotten about them. Years after the game has come out, and I don't think a single person has mentioned the Juavo once. I... I don't even think the game acknowledges that they were a thing. The cinematic universe for Resident Evil is usually pretty consistent, and they try, the devs try to, like, stand by their bullshit. I know a lot of people still, including the devs, consider Resident Evil 6 to be a legitimate canon game. But if you think about it, it kind of falls flat on its face because we've never explored any of that shit ever again. We don't know what happened to Sherry. We don't know what happened to Jake. Sure, we know about Chris, but Chris is voiced by a totally different person now, and he works for Umbrella, which is a PMC. It's it's like watching your favorite TV show just fall apart and crumble, and you're just left to sit there and be like, what is happening? What I fear is they're going to start transitioning modern Resident Evil into the old formula that they did with Resident Evil 6, where they, they have a period of a few years where it's like, oh, let's release some scary games, maybe a couple of like mobile ones just to kind of appease that crowd or whatever, do some crossover events. That's all fine. It, it, it just kind of like, it, it's just boring. It's mundane. I really wish I could not sound like a fucking idiot right now, but playing this game for three days straight has done nothing but cook my brains into fucking ramen noodles. I 
can't stop thinking about Resident Evil 6 now. And it's because I've been trying to find something good in it that's actually worth talking about. And there's a few things that I'll go over the review. I'm already going way over the limit I wanted to for this unhinged rant. But my point is, Resident Evil 6 suffered from a lot of ailments. The terrible writing, for one. This is something that I'm going to bring up in the review, but I'll give you a quick sneak peek for here. The writing in this game is so fucking weird and out of nowhere and uncomfortable you know that mission where you're playing as jake and you're with sherry you're on the mountain and it's really hard to see you have to collect the data fucking usbs in that mission jake and sherry are speeding down the mountain because there's an avalanche coming so you have to drive the the snowmobile during this segment jake makes a comment about how god hates him he says something like oh man god must really hate me today and Sherry, for no reason at all, both of their lives are in danger, and they are both at risk of dying a horrible death. And for no reason at all, Sherry just drops this bombshell. She says, well, I don't hate you, Jake. Okay. It's shit like that, that it's like, wh what was the point of writing that? Was it to hint that Sherry might have a crush on Jake? Why? They had no chemistry. In fact, the only chemistry they have is... At this point in the game, Jake is a nothing more than a mercenary who is wanted for his blood, and he's using that to his advantage so that he can get paid for it. 50 million US dollars is what he's looking for uh, in return for helping Sherry. Obviously, over the course of the game, he changes his mind, but we had no chemistry yet between the two. So now all of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, I don't hate you, Jake. You're actually kind of handsome and hot and sexy, and I like the way you drive that snowmobile and beat up Eustonek and fuck up all the juabo around us. Aren't they a bunch of fucking assholes? God, you're so hot. It, it comes out of nowhere. It's weird. There's another weird moment in the writing. I'm just bringing this up for shits and giggles because you're going to see it in the review. But there's another weird moment when Jake meets Chris and for some reason, Chris just recognizes him immediately. I hate that shit. It doesn't even make sense. Jake looks nothing like Albert Wesker. He's got a buzz cut, red hair, fucking blue eyes and a scar on his cheek. He looks nothing like his father. And somehow Chris just makes this weird, like telekinetic connection with him upon seeing him the first time. And Jake says, what, you, like you got something to say? And Chris is like, oh no, I, uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I, I killed your father or whatever, but I, you know, I thought you were somebody else. It's fucking weird. It like, it comes out of nowhere, man. So yeah, point of this whole unhinged review. I'm still working on it. I'm still going to get the, the full review done. I said unhinged review. I meant unhinged rant. My brain is fucking spaghetti and it's because of Resident Evil 6. So I'm going to upload this to the channel, probably unedited. I might make a couple cuts here and there just to cut out all the bullshit. But hopefully you guys will be looking forward to it because I got to say, this is one I'm working really hard on. I estimate it's probably going to be in the 40 minute range. But I, I, I'm not sure. I don't want to guarantee that. Because I've covered two out of the four possible campaigns. Uh, a, I'm running out of space on my computer <laughs> to film stuff. Like I said, I've got this terabyte of memory, but it's all full of just footage from Resident Evil 6. But I also have to complete Jake and Ada's campaigns. And I don't know how long each of them are. Beating Chris's campaign felt like fucking years. I don't know why. I beat Leon's main campaign in like a day or so. But then I played Chris's and I swear to God, it took me so long. I really don't know why. I was playing on normal and I found myself dying an awful lot to some broken in-game bullshit. But again, I'll go over all that in the review. Right now, please enjoy this rant because that's really all I have to say. I'll see you guys next time.